everyone welcome to the channel it is your host the lion gaming crew and in this diablo 3 build guide we're going to be taking a look at the monkey king's garb set for the monk available both in hardcore and softcore so no matter which mode you play on on ps4 and ps5 we have got you covered if you're looking for any of the gear shown in this video it is being given away for absolutely free in the link in the description sign up for our discord account if you don't already have one it's absolutely free to join and everything on there is free so big special shout outs to each and every single one of my of the member of the discord community and each and every single one of my subscribers without your guys' support none of this would be possible so truly thank you and without further ado let's go ahead and jump right on into this build guide so for our main weapon we are picking up in geome codenamed force dealing 2,051,568.8 damage per second it has that poison damage on there that is going to be a constant theme in all future sets and i'm also updating all older sets to have that poison damage on the weapon so we can take advantage of that season 25 soul shard affixed onto the amulet so very nice indeed 8,000 experience per kill from the gem of ease and your skill cooldowns are reduced by 10 seconds for 15 seconds after killing an elite pack. That is the NGO perk. And finally, the last perk is when you kill an enemy, you deal the damage done by the death blow to all enemies within 25 yards. Pets and followers cannot trigger this effect. That is the season 25 death blow soul shard affix. Cooldown of all skills, 46.8%. Reduce all resource costs by 27.1%. And this is a level 1 rare sword. Moving on to the first piece of the Monkey King's Garb set, codenamed Force. A lot of crucial affixes on here. The 200% damage is nice. The 6,000 dex plus the 750 makes that around 7,000 overall dexterity, which is always nice to see. 364 resist all elements. You get some increased attack speed and increased life, both by 15%. 220% critical damage, 14% critical chance. Cooldown of all skills is coming in at 19%. Resource cost is a flat 10%. 24% chance to deal area damage on hit. And finally, 15% damage to elite enemies. We have the 6-piece set bonus utilizing the Ring of Royal Grandeur. So if you don't have the Ring of Royal Grandeur, make sure to let us know in your gear request message and we will send one out with the set. Here is the 2-piece and 4-piece set bonus shown on screen if you want to pause the video. And take a look at it in greater detail by all means i'm going to slowly work my way down to the six piece set bonus so you can take a look at that as well these are level one primal ancient set gloves moving on to the shoulders the second piece of the monkey king's garb set codename force pretty much identical to that previous piece of gear uh with the affixes so we're not going to list them off again the bonuses are identical as well I, guys, I can't say it enough. Consistency, consistency, consistency. If you want to learn how to make great sets, I'll tell you one thing. Consistency is key. Level 1, Primal Ancient Set Shoulders. Moving on to the chest piece. The third piece of that Monkey King set, codename Force. Pretty much identical to the shoulders and the gloves, so we don't really need to talk about this piece of gear too much. Level 1, Primal Ancient Set Chest Armor. Moving on to the helm now, again, the fourth piece of the Monkey King's Garb, codename Force. Uh, this is where things start to switch up. We up the critical hit damage and up the critical hit chance to give us the max values for that. Other than that, though, you're getting 14 spirit per critical hit, which is very nice. You're also getting life after each kill and life from health potions and globes. 1,000 to all stats. You're going to cast a devastating ring of fire that inflicts 20,000% weapon damage to enemies that passes through from the red soul shard. And after killing 100 enemies from the Season 25 Soul Shard Affix. And after gaining level, your resource costs are removed and cooldowns on skills are reduced by 75% for 30 seconds. That is from the Soul Shard as well. Cooldown of all skills, 27.1%. Resource cost reduction, flat 10. And the bottom two bonuses are the same as the chest, shoulders, and gloves. And this is a level 1 Primal Ancient Set Helm. Moving on to the amulet now. This is a level 1 rare amulet. This is the PvP amulet buffing all main stats. We get 1,200% damage, 9,000 regular damage, cold and fire damage, both at 225. You also get 60% increased attack speed 
10% critical hit chance, 23,000 life per hit, 300% damage to all monk skills, so that ignores your ability loss as well. You get a couple of bonuses for killing an elite pack and uh, picking up a health globe. They're going to increase your move speed by 30% for 7 seconds for the elite pack, and for the health globe, it's going to be 40% for 7 seconds. And you also get consecutive hit buffs by increasing attack speed and increasing damage. The attack speed is uh, 3% up to 30% for 3 seconds. And the damage is by 10% up to 100%, so very nice. And you're getting all of the other bonuses shown on screen right here. This is really just completely iced out with a lot of those Season 25 Soul Shards. But the main one right there is when you deal poison damage to an enemy, they receive 50% increased poison damage from all sources for 10 seconds. Very, very nice, man. And you also gain an additional Rift Progress Orb when you kill an Elite Pack. And you get the Momentum Passive and reduces the spirit cost of Wave of Light by 50% and increases its damage by 550%. So great, man. So, so great. Quran of all skills is at 52.1%. Resource cost reduction, 27.1%. A whopping 75% damage to elite enemies and that capped 25% movement speed increase. For a level 1 rare amulet, you love to see it, man. For the bracers, these are the uh, Gundungo's gear, I believe. Codename Force, Wave of Light also slows enemies by 80% for 3 seconds and deals 150% increased damage. You guys can tell where we're going with this build, man. It's going to be another Wave of Light, just absolute decimation of the enemy set. Uh, 9,000 in uh, dexterity is very, very nice. Bonuses are the same as the chest, shoulders, and gloves. Level 1 Rare Bracers. For the offhand, this is... Um, God, man, I can never remember the name of this. Uh, I don't know, man. I forgot the name, but look at that damage, though. 489,472.9 damage. That's just, like, so crazy for an offhand to have that high of damage. Like, I don't know, guys. It's insane. You get 6,000 regular damage, 800% damage, increased attack speed, critical chance, life per hit. You get the two move speed bonuses after killing Elite Pack and picking up a health globe. And increases the maximum st stack count of Sweeping Wind by 10 and increases the damage by 800%. You absolutely love to see that, man. We're going to be utilizing Sweeping Wind and Wave of Light to just completely plow through some enemies, man. So, for the first ring, this is the Immortal Ring. Test Ring 516, Immortality. You're never going to die while wearing this. 6,000 dex, 7,000 damage is all good. 300% damage to all monk skills. You just love to see that, man. 70 yards for the gold health pickup radius. That's pretty much standard on every single piece of gear. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. You get the bonus damage and increased attack speed So for consecutive hits, but you're going to one-shot everything, so that's really not going to come into play all that much. Um, this has the uh, mortal affix when receiving fatal damage and regenerates 160,000 life per second, so it's like double immortality, guys. It's, it's double immortality, man. 40.9% on cooldown of all skills, 61.2% on resource cost reduction, 48% area damage on hit, 45% damage to the enemy bonus. Second ring, 1 billion physical skill damage ring right here, level 1 rare ring, 300% damage to all monk skills, same as the, uh, the immor immortal ring, ignores durability loss. It's got like freaking 5, like 6 bonuses, man? What is that, craziness, bro? Crazy, crazy, crazy. You get the consecutive hit one, and you get the increased move speed, so you're pretty much going to be zooming around the map, man. You're just going to be fucking flying like, I don't even know, man. 68.6% .6 on that skill cooldown, 65.1% on resource cost reduction, and a whopping 90% damage to elite enemies. Level 1 rare ring, man. You, can't, you just can't get enough of that, man. This is the first piece of the Captain Crimson set. The Captain Crimson's Silk... Or no, or not Silk Girl. Waiters, man. They're the waiters. Codename Force, pretty much identical to the chest, shoulders, and gloves, so we're not really going to touch on this piece of gear too much. We have the two-piece and three-piece, again, utilizing that Ring of Royal Grandeur, so if you don't have one, make sure to let us know, and we will send one out to you. This is at level one, Primal Ancient Set Boots. For the pants, the last piece of the Monkey King's Garb set. Look at that dex, man. With the Augment, it's over, it's over 10,000. That's just absolutely insane. The bonuses are the same as the boots, so we don't really need to talk about that. And these are level 1 Primal Ancient Set Pants for the last piece of gear, man. The last piece of gear I had to show for you guys today. Captain Crimson Silk Girdle, codename Force. Uh, again, 10,000 decks. Like, you really can't go wrong there. I mean, that's just such a crazy value, man. Like, 10,000 on a single piece of gear. What? What? 
level one primal ancient set belt so moving on to these skills man this uh this could be played around with a little bit uh for the primary one you can really go with whichever one you want you can even switch it out for like a different skill if you want to i like fist of thunder for quickening because like it turns the damage into physical and then we can take advantage of that one billion physical scale damage ring same with the wave of light this is going to be our main damage dealing attack and the secondary skill tree and you want to put on wall of light so that way it turns into physical and yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna be crazy. You'll see here when we get into the gameplay portion. For the square ability, this is another mandatory skill in the technique skill tree, sweeping wind with any rune, but I think blade storm is is the best one in, in my personal opinion. Moving on to the triangle ability, this can be changed out for anything, but we're picking up Mystic Ally in the Focus Skill Tree with the rune fire ally. For the circle ability, again in that focus skill tree, we're picking up Epiphany with the rune Soothing Mist. That one can be changed out as well. These two are pretty much open slots. And finally, for that mobility skill and that technique skill tree, we're picking up Dashing Strike with the rune Way of the Falling Star. Passive number one, Fleet Footed. Passive number two, Momentum. Sorry, don't mind me. Gotta change that out real quick because, you know, we got it on our amulet, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? Put CZ Initiative on instead. Passive number three, Determination. Passive number four, Beacon of Yitar. And like I said just a second ago, we got Momentum already built on the Amulet, so you're good to go. Q powers being Flesh Rake. The middle one, Saushkin Gray Gay, sorry, I slaughtered that freaking name. That is mandatory, though. You definitely want that. And the Ring of Royal Grandeur is mandatory as well. Moving on to the uh, Paragon, everything into Vitality, guys. I know, I know you're so sick and tired of me saying it. You probably got this one too, Attack Speed. Yeah, because cooldown reduction, critical chance, critical damage, all capped. For the defensive skill tree, armor, resist all. You guys know how this goes by now. And utility skill tree, area damage for this build. We're, we're doing area damage, then gold pickup radius. Quickly touching on the damage numbers. 784 billion, 680 million, 355,000, 792 damage. Not bad at all. Look at our armor score, guys. Our armor score is better than our dexterity. So that's just got to tell you guys something, man. 138,436, dexterity 114,167, not bad at all though, definitely not bad at all. Moving on down into the offensive stats, damage increased by skills, it's at 30%, so you know, that's good, that's good, I mean it's way higher than that, but that's okay. Bonus damage to elites, 410%, tax per second 5, and tax speed increase is showing a value at 15%, which is always nice. Critical hit damage and critical hit chance both capped at their respective values. Area damage 240%. That's not bad at all. Cooldown reduction 99.61, man. We just keep hitting that 99. That's why I keep telling you guys consistency, man. Because that's how you can hit these crazy ass numbers, man. Consistency. 97.53% on that damage reduction with our resistances coming in at 91.71% for all of them. Moving on down into the life statistics. 211% total life bonus, life per second 166,000, life per hit 383,000, life per kill 17,000, not bad. Uh, health globe healing bonus 38,000, always nice just in case you're in a pinch. Bonus to gold slash globe radius set for 70 yards. And spirit cost reduction 98%, everything above 95% is going to be good to go. Movement speed uh, 25% plus the passive makes a total of 35%. And bonus experience per kill, 8,000. So with all of that gone over, we talked about the skills, we talked about the gear, we talked about the Paragon distribution. Um, so yeah, let's teach you guys how to rock this build, man. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is get your sweeping wind stacks up because that's going to increase your overall damage. Now how you do that is just uh, killing enemies within the radius of sweeping wind. So you kind of have to get close to enemies before you kill them because your wave of light is just going, it's going to one shot everything. So kind of get nice and up close and personal with those enemies and make sure you cast sweeping wind and then go ahead and cast your wave of light to ultimately finish them off. I found like anything above five stacks is good to go. I mean, it can go up to, I believe, uh, 13 total stacks. So if you're at 13 stacks, you're you're going to be freaking brooming, man. You're going to have increased damage. You're going to have increased movement speed. You're going to be flying around. Like So now we have our max stack at 13. Now your basic goal is just to literally make sure you don't run out of your stacks of Sweeping Wind. Because they're kind of hard to build up. I mean, I'm not going to and say that they uh, are not, they're not easy. I mean, it is pretty easy to build them back up again in case you lose it. But it's just a little time consuming. 
So focus more on making sure you have your swooping wind stacks tapped out. And then after that guys, it's literally just wave of light and dashing strike, man. Dashing strike and wave of light are going to be your best friend with this build right here. Every other skill I haven't even touched yet because I kind of want to just demonstrate how powerful this is just using wave of light, dashing strike, and sweeping wind. I mean, then if you really want to get saucy and you really want to get spicy with the enemies, go ahead and start casting all your other abilities and it's just adding more pressure onto the enemy, man. Like, you're really putting the, you're putting that absolute pressure on, on the enemy, man. It, it's great. This build, it's quick. It's highly mobile because you can just literally dash and strike everywhere with the cooldown reduction being so high. You're, I mean, you, you're gonna have to wait like 0.5 seconds, but I mean, half a second isn't long to wait at all. And that, that's just like, because that's the lowest it can go to is half a second. So yeah, this is very easy, very beginner friendly build. I mean, really just, you have to get your sweeping wind stacks up and then you just press your R2, your wave of light, man. That's literally all I have to say. This is such an easy, to learn build it's easy to master and it's very very fun to play so i think you guys are all going to enjoy this one man i had a blast making this set for you guys so if you guys have any feedback for me go ahead and let me know on the discord man we have a whole chat set up there for all things diablo and finally i'd like to thank you guys for watching man if you made it all the way till the end you are an absolute legend and i really really appreciate your support and finally, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing if you like the content style of these videos and you would like to see more of videos like this one. And finally, again, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys all are having a fantastic day or evening, and I hope to catch you all in a future video coming out soon. Stay safe, stay happy, and last but not least, stay gaming, my friends.